I can move you like this. And I can move you like this. Why can't I move you like this? <laughs> I know. What if I make some awesome risers so it can get up and down? <laughs> hey, good folks, my name is Leif, and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft terrain for the tabletop. As you may or may not have noticed, this channel has been a little bit silent as of late. It's just life is very busy at the moment, and that means that this hobby of mine will have to play second violin from time to time. Today, I want to show you how I elevated my Mordheim terrain. So without further ado, let's get cracking. All right, so I'm going to start this by grabbing my Proxon Hotwire foam cutter. This is a very versatile machine and I love this for making things such as bricks. And bricks is something that I'm going to be using quite a lot for this build. I set my guide to 5mm which is my standard brick size. And using this I can easily mill out different strips of uh, future bricks. Once everything has been converted to strips I run the strips through the 5mm gap creating nice bricks with 10 times 5 times 5 millimeter dimensions. I just want to mention that you can clearly see that the bricks are oversized, but I think this is a good average between gameplay and visuals. Now in order to texture them, I will bring uh, some of them into a tub, add a couple of stones and then tumble them around and shake them around this will ensure that the bricks gets a much more textured appearance, as you can see side by side with an untextured brick there. Now the material for my risers, uh, here I'm just showing that I did try different techniques, but in all earnest, I don't think anything looks as good, at least what I'm doing, as placing bricks. So even though I had some scrap material there, uh, you'll see later I actually found use for it, I wanted to do individually laid out bricks because I feel like it gives the most superior visual quality. And you know what, I'm going to do this once for my Mordheim board, so why not do it, well, correct. Meanwhile, what we can see here in the background, I am literally cutting out a section of my plateau. The dimensions and so on isn't really important because everything is going to be subject to your board, but I cut out the piece of uh, foam that was supposed to be the stairs, and then I just mill out 5mm sheets of it. This will ensure that I will get a nice structure that I can then brick. And this, as you can see, already looks like, well, a flight of stairs. And when we glue it back in, since the piece was from the foam, it slots in quite nicely. I felt like these uh, risers needed some sort of timber support, so 8mm balsa square dowels to the rescue. These are textured using a wire brush and then cut to dimensions. Here you can see that I actually in the corners cut out a slit so that it's easier for me to add the balsa wood at the edges or at the corners of the riser. When it came to the middle of them, well, it wasn't as important so I actually just glue them on using hot glue. At this point you can really start to appreciate the dimension and these fellers are going to be quite big, they're over a foot long and wide. What I like to do, as you saw there, was also do the bottom row of bricks with the hot glue gun. This ensures that I can work with white glue for the rest of the bricks and I will have something for the white glue bricks to rest upon. I find this process strangely satisfying and calming. And I really do recommend people to do this if you have the time for it. Now when it came to the stones on the actual top of the riser, I opted to go for a one centimeter wide bricks in square, but I wanted them to be flatter, so I cut the half centimeter bricks down to somewhere between two and three millimeters thick. 
and with that the construction was done. As we watch myself priming these with Vallejo Black Primer, I want to take a moment and thank all of my patrons for their patience and support. And a special shout out goes to my champion and legend level patrons. Thank you Andreas Wienberg, Bo Algren, Erik Ortman, 4BXP, Juan Marconesa, Lawrence Davis, Mad Nurse Magnus Solberg, Leander, Niklas Svenenlind and Oliver Granlund. You are all awesome and I thank you so much for your support. Once I have Xenothal primed it, I, as you see, cover the entire thing with brown ink. This is vital so that you get that grimy feel and it's a good base for essentially anything that is worn. Once I've done that, I come in with two sets of grey. A dark grey first, which I stipple all around, and a light grey for the dry brushing. I use some wall filler or speckle which I dilute with water and then I put it into the actual walls and then I dry it off with some tissue paper. For the top of the actual riser I chose to go with coconut fiber. This time around unlike with my board I had pre-wet this coconut fiber so it had already swollen up to the, its final size. And in order to lock it down, I just create a mixture of water and some Mod Podge and spray it on to the top of the riser. Now let's take a short break here for hopefully some exciting news. One of the questions that I get the most often is about my posters that I use for my Mordheim builds. Where did they come from? Did you make them yourself? Can I buy them from you? What if I join your patron? Will I get them then? Well, the reason why I haven't given them out to people is simply because I made them myself in Photoshop with layout and so on. And then I used the internet to find existing artwork, which I, you know, used for my own personal posters. So perhaps it's understandable that I wouldn't feel exactly good taking credit of this and giving it out to people. Sorry. But the good news is I have a solution. I have made a first set of 110 posters for you to download now. The artwork I made using Midjourney AI and now I've spent hours of training the AI to give me the art I needed, creating the templates, doing graphic design and well, I really hope that you enjoy these and like I said, these are free for anyone to download in the description. I'm not asking for any money or compensation whatsoever. That being said, if you decide to use them and post some images online, then please feel free to tag devs and dice in the socials. Again, I really hope you enjoy these ones. After adding the graffiti, it's time to move to the next stage, which is spraying some strong tone here and there just to bind everything together and get that grimy look. Obviously, this is for Mordheim, so blood has been spilt here and there. One little tip that I want to recommend is to dilute your uh, blood for the blood god with some flow improver. It makes it easier to work with, and also, it's cost effective. Let's have a look at the final result, shall we? I am super happy how these risers turned out. They fit perfectly with my existing terrain and I really feel like they add to the story in many ways and also to the gameplay. Previously my buildings could move in X and Z axis, now I've introduced a Y axis to increase the modularity. Now, as usual, you know me, did I just do one riser? No, I did two large ones and four small ones. And these smaller ones can be stacked on top of the large ones to create even one additional level of height. I really love how all of this will play into the verticality aspects of Mordheim. And I think in all earnest, these might be the most beautiful, modular and dynamic site blockers I've ever created. Now, how did these look on the tabletop? Well, they worked perfectly. Since I have used grids for my entire world uh, when doing the measurements, these all essentially equal one flight of stairs or one floor. 
so it worked perfectly and I could create nice path weights that was elevated and made the gameplay even more interesting. Now I want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more of my videos, then YouTube recommends that you should be watching this. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video.